This program is brought to you by Oasis. Welcome, O Ramadan. You are honored, O month of the Quran. It is Ramadan. O one who sleeps, stand up and declare the oneness of Allah. The oneness of Allah. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We commence in the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى Most gracious, most merciful We praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم All his companions, his entire household May Allah سبحانه وتعالى bless them all and bless every single one of us Amin my brothers and sisters, yesterday we saw how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to protect ourselves, to protect our eyes, to protect our ears, to protect the heart as well, because the intentions we have are of utmost importance. Verse number 36 of Surah Al Isra, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wala taqfu ma laysa laka bihi ilm, inna sam'a wal basara wal fu'ada kullu ulaika kana anhu mas'ula. Do not pursue that which you have no knowledge of, for indeed the faculty of hearing, the sight that you have, and the heart will all be questioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us all and to grant us sound knowledge for us to be able to pursue that which is definitely beneficial for us to be able to spread that which we know for a fact is correct. Remember, if you pursue something that is not correct, that is inaccurate, what would happen? It would spread because of you. And that ignorance, the sin of it would also get back to you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. The next surah is Surah Maryam. In fact, the surah that we are speaking about, Surah Maryam, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts off by making mention of a dua of Zakaria alayhi salatu was salam. He was quite old and he did not have any male offspring. So, he continued to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for male offspring, even though he was very old. And the beautiful words he used are a motivation to us. He was old and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, verse number four of Surah Maryam, Rabbi inni wahanal azmu minni washta'ala ra'su shayba walam akun bidua Zakaria alayhi salam says, O oh my Rabb, O oh my Maker, O oh you who is in control of every aspect of my existence, my bones have become weak, meaning I'm old, I'm very old. My bones are weak. My hair is now gray, but I will never ever be from amongst those who becomes hopeless or filled with misfortune regarding the dua to you, regarding calling out to you. I will call out to you. I will continue calling out to you. I will be convinced completely right up to the end that you will respond when the time is right. And he kept on making this dua. Lo and behold, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya Zakariya, inna nubashiruka bi ghulam, ismu Yahya. O oh, Zakaria, we are giving you good news of a little baby boy, a child who is a boy, and we have named him Yahya. That name was given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the name Yahya. In, Eng in the English language, it is translated as John. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. This name was given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine the blessing. Allah didn't only give him a child. But Allah made him a prophet and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala named him over and above that. My brothers and sisters, I'm sure we can save ourselves from becoming among those who loses hope or who lose hope. Subhanallah. By learning from this story and the dua of Zakaria alayhi salatu was salam, we all have needs. Allah knows when it will be right to give it to you. And Allah knows if that is not good for you, he won't give it to you. And it will be a blessing. 
But you can continue making dua for it. You can continue trying for it even if Allah is not going to give it to you because as a result of that dua, He will elevate your status on the day of judgment, seeing that you worshipped Him and you believed that He was in charge, He was in control. That is what worship is all about. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Similarly, we have a very beautiful lesson that we learn when it comes to how to face certain matters and issues that are too big sometimes for us to clarify and clear ourselves. Where do we get this from? There are two things mentioned in Surah Maryam where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of something tells the people to be quiet, to remain silent. Don't worry, Allah will help you. The first one was when Zakaria alayhi salam was told that you will be having a child. Now he started feeling shy. He was a little bit embarrassed. Embarrassed about what? Hey, I'm old. You know, when you see an old man and suddenly he's carrying a small little baby, you know, sometimes it might be a little point of embarrassment for him to say, I'm old, but I'm not cold. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. But regarding Zakaria alayhi salatu was salam, it was not that. It was actually a point whereby he needed a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His wife was also quite old and they were blessed with something beautiful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in a very, very unique way when he was asked, Oh Allah, Allah was asked by Zakaria alayhi salam, Oh Allah, grant me a sign. Grant me some form of sign from you. Allah says, Ayatuka Allah to Kaliman Satala Thalayalin Sawiya. Your sign is that you should not speak to the people for three nights completely. Don't speak. Don't say one word. You keep on worshipping, keep on praying. We will deal with the matter for you. Brothers and sisters, sometimes silence is better than having spoken. Nobody regrets their silence more than they regret their speech. When you are quiet, you still own what you want to say. The minute it comes out of your tongue or your mouth, it controls you. It owns you. Why? You've said it. There we are. The damage is done. So remain silent. Be quiet. Think about it. Praise Allah. Ask Allah's guidance. Allah will open the way. Sometimes we are accused of issues. We don't even have the platform to clarify. And sometimes it's so petty, so glaringly false that those with a mind would actually know this is nonsense. We don't want to accept it. We know this person. They are not like this. Sometimes when we open our mouths to say something, we drop ourselves so low because now we have to attack someone in order to protect ourselves. Say someone spreads a rumor about you and you get up and you start telling the people, no, this man is bad and that what happened? You started attacking another individual to prove yourself right. The best thing, keep quiet. Hold your dignity, hold your respect, leave it in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will deal with it. Not everyone on the globe needs to love you or like you. You have to have a fair share of haters. You have to. If not, you're not normal. You are a hypocrite. A hypocrite is he who wants to please everyone. Everyone's your friend. Those who are upright are your friends. Those who are not upright are also your friends. A true believer is he whom those who are upright love him. But those who are not upright, they feel distance from that particular person. That's a true believer. So when you have people who don't like you for the right reasons, thank Allah, you're a normal human being. It happened to the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People prepared armies to attack them. Why? Not because they were bad, because those people were bad. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. Similarly, Maryam alayha salatu was salam and the surah is named after her. She makes a similar dua asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a sign and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells her also verse number 26 of Surah Maryam. If you see any human being, then you should say that I have promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to abstain. I have made a vow to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to abstain from speaking. I'm not going to speak to any human being today. Then Allah taught her in another verse just after that to point to the child. So she pointed to the child. Jesus may peace be upon him. Isa alayhi salatu was salam. He spoke from the cradle. He responded. This was a miracle and it's a powerful miracle of Jesus may peace be upon him. He spoke from the cradle. 
As they started accusing her, the accusation was great, accusing her of immorality. How did you come up with this child? When she pointed to that particular child, the child says, I am the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has blessed me and Allah has favored me and Allah has made me into a messenger. Allah has given me the book. What a beautiful way of saving or of clarifying the names of both of them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all. Now, obviously, you must be thinking, well, we are not prophets of Allah. Yes, it's true. But the lesson remains. Allah makes mention of how silence was the solution to the problem here. We need to consider in some of our matters, perhaps silence might be the best medicine. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and ease. Now, this doesn't mean when you go home tonight and your wife asks you, how was it this evening? And you're just quiet. Not at all. You need to answer. Say something. Come on. Don't be unrealistic. Don't say <clears throat> and start pointing towards here and there. The wall is not going to speak, my brothers and sisters. We need to be realistic. Let's move on. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam story is also made mention of in Surah Maryam and in a beautiful way. One of the main points that is driven home in this surah is Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam guiding his own father who was much older than him and he was a leader of society and community. The father was an elderly man, respectable person. According to the narrations, his name was Azar. And he was told by Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. Ya abati, lima ta'budu ma la yasma'u wa la yubusiru wa la yughni anka shay'a. As a young boy, he says, verse number 42, Oh my father, why do you worship that which cannot see, it cannot hear, it cannot hear or see and it cannot avail you in any way whatsoever it cannot help you be of no benefit how can you worship these sticks and stones and the father was getting cross he was getting upset so ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam says verse number 43 <laughs> Oh, my father, knowledge has come to me that did not come to you. Follow me and I will guide you to the straight path. But the father was too arrogant. Number one, he did not want to take correction. Number two, he did not want to be told by a person younger than him. We need to know, brothers and sisters, save yourselves from ignorance by taking correction. You know, in Taraweeh, normally when a mistake is made, it is an honor to be corrected. I believe that those behind who are Hufad, should scream and yell at the top of their voices because this is the word of Allah. We don't want to play games with it. Wallahi, you want to go to Jannah. You don't want to play games. I know of people who say, no, don't correct and leave it. We'll correct it tomorrow. We'll see, etc., etc. Wallahi, go on the day of judgment, having been a person who was corrected regarding the name, the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You took the correction and you made sure that the people got the correct message. Allahu Akbar. I am one who believes it is an honor to be corrected. Wallahi, if someone has to scream and yell at the back in the proper way to correct me when I am wrong, I prefer to kiss them on the head. Wallahi. And I'm sure the Hufad in our midst would know how it feels to be stuck and there's no one behind you to correct you. And you don't know whether you're going left or right. Subhanallah. I remember once, and this is a story that we were told when we were young. You know, we are taught that when you're reading Salah, you obviously the farad salah the first rak'ah must be from a place in the quran that is earlier or before what you're going to read in the next one so one man started Qul nas in the first rak'ah so when he said in the second rak'ah one of the old men behind now he was quiet for a while thinking what should i do the old man says now where are you going to go subhanallah may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us <laughs> because now everyone is stuck you already finished an nas now where are you going to go May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. My brothers and sisters, <laughs> it is a beautiful experience to listen to the Quran, to be able to appreciate the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept them from us. So this was a correction from a child. 
The father refused to accept it. I am telling you, save yourselves from ignorance. Save yourselves from the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by acknowledging correction, by taking it, even if it is from someone younger than you, even if it is from someone who perhaps might not know more than you in other spheres or aspects of life. But if they are correcting you, what they've said is correct. Take that correction. Thank Allah. Thank them. Be humble. Make sure that you've actually lifted that to the correct levels. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says as a result of the rejection of the truth by the father of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, he himself was rejected. He was turned away such that Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam was instructed not to make dua or supplicate for his mercy when he died. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and not do that to us. What a powerful lesson of being glad when people correct you and looking forward to correction. My brothers and sisters, if you don't take correction, how are you going to improve? Sometimes we sit and I'm talking of the Quran again. We read the Quran thinking that now we are perfect. We know a lot. We are the top reciter, etc., etc. Not realizing that the minute that comes to your mind, you've stopped yourself from going any further. Once you think you are the best, you're at the top. You may not be and you won't be, but you've actually just stopped your progress. Keep on accepting people's corrections, taking them and improving. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us improvement. I mean, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of people who followed after some of the messengers. Those who were good, they received goodness, but there were generations who followed thereafter. They did not fulfill their prayer. And what did they do? They followed their desires. So Allah says, because of these two things, they were totally astray and they will be cast into the punishment of Jahannam. They will be cast into a place where they will be receiving a painful punishment because they abandoned their connection with Allah. If you want to save yourselves, you need to develop the connection with Allah. One of Allah. The one of Allah. The one of Allah. The primary way of developing the connection of, with Allah is number one, don't associate partners with him in any way. Number two, fulfill your prayer five times a day. There must be no excuse for you not fulfilling the prayer. That is the beginning point to developing your link with your maker. Allahu Akbar. My brothers and sisters, I know that some of us perhaps we are weak when it comes to salah. We fulfill. I know I speak to some of the youngsters and I ask them, so be honest, how many times do you pray? No, I used to pray twice a day, but now I pray thrice. <laughs> Come on, my brothers and sisters. We believe you have to pray five times a day. You can do better. You can definitely do better. And I believe that words of this nature would actually be a true encouragement for us. I challenge you to fulfill five salah a day. I challenge you and see the benefit you feel in your own life. You will derive solutions to your problems. Allah will open your doors. Allah will protect you from haram. When you're planning to commit adultery, you're planning to go to the clubs, you're planning to go and do drugs, etc. But because you're regular with Salah, you will be embarrassed. Hey, but it's about to be Dhuhr time. How can I go now? What am I going to do? I'm going to come back, perhaps, etc, etc. The disobedience of Allah. When you are genuinely interested in your Salah, Allah says, Inna salata tanha Salah itself will prohibit you from immorality and evil. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. So verse number 59 of Surah Maryam, Allah says, فَخَلَفَ مِن بَعْدِهِمْ خَلْفٌ أَضَاعُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَاتَّبَعُوا الشَّهَوَاتِ فَسَوْفَ يَلْقَوْنَ غَيَّا إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا فَأُولَئِكَ يَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةَ وَلَا يُظْلَمُونَ شَيْئًا After making mention of those who followed after the messengers etc. and they abandoned their salah, they followed their desires or they followed their own whims and fancies, their lusts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the punishment is for them, except for those who repent. They believe, they do good deeds. For them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they will not be oppressed. Look at how Allah tells us every time he speaks about the punishment, he gives us a way out. He doesn't want us to feel at a loss of hope. Not at all. He wants us to develop ourselves. So he says, look, there is a warning. You better be careful. There is definitely a warning. 
But if you want to be saved from that, just repent, turn to us. We are most forgiving, most merciful. We will open your doors in this world and the next. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness in this world as well as the next. We move on to Surah Taha. Whenever I hear the word Taha, I think of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. The reason is he was a man who had embarked to murder Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at one stage, right at the beginning. And Allah guided him just because he was sincere in listening to four or five verses of Surah Taha from the beginning. He always used to believe that, you know, Islamic rules and regulations are there to make your life difficult. A lot of people do believe that. The non-Muslim sometimes, and I've been told, you know, I love Islam, but too many rules, too many regulations. I normally give an example to say, you know, when you have a private school, they have rules, regulations, they make sure your uniform is in order, your hair is in order, your mouth is in order, your teeth are in order, your ears are in order, everything is in order. Why? They have so many rules and regulations because that's a disciplined school. When people hear the name of the school, they know, hey, that's a school to be reckoned with. When they hear you speaking, they know you're not from any old ordinary school, but you are from a top school. Too many rules and regulations. We are from a top religion, my brothers and sisters. When people interact with us, wallahi, they should know immediately, not any old ordinary person of the street. These people have rules and regulations governing how they even use the toilet. Allahu Akbar. May Allah bless us. What a great gift. So don't look at it as something that is a disaster, as something that is a point in order to distress you. The opening verses of Surah Taha, they were a response to Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. Allah says, مَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْقُرْآنَ لِتَشْقَى We have not revealed this book to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in order for it to be a source of distress for you. No, it is there, it is a reminder for those who are conscious of Allah. For those who fear Allah, it is a reminder. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu began to tremble. Immediately, he heard few verses. He says, take me to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I want to declare my faith. And he was taken to the house of Al-Arqam ibn Abil Arqam radiallahu anhu, where Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was at the time. And he declared his shahada. He was moved by how many verses? Four. The question is, and I've asked this question a few days back. We read the Quran as Muslims from cover to cover. We were not moved at all. Ramadan finishes, we go back to our ills, our bad ways and habits. We read the Quran cover to cover. People are proud to say, I finished the Quran in one night. I finished three Qurans. I did so many khatams. Ramadan, every 10 days I complete one khatam. My brother, what's the point of completing a khatam when your life didn't change? Your sins have not been quit. Look at Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. Four verses were enough to change his entire life. After that, he became known as radiallahu anhu. Today, it is an insult to say the name of Umar without saying, may Allah be pleased with him. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with us all. So the point here is save yourselves. By allowing this Quran to have an impact on you, by looking at it with the correct eyes and by having the correct attitude, the correct heart when it comes to the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us elevation and may we be shaken in the right way so that we can quit our bad ways and habits. I repeat, those two, three verses were enough to move their lives with us, we read the entire Quran and we listen to the whole book and we haven't even been moved. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So Allah says, verse number 16 of Surah Taha, those who don't believe in the hereafter, don't let them lead you astray. Regarding Musa alayhi salatu was salam, the Prophet Moses, may peace be upon him, Allah says, don't let those who don't believe in the hereafter lead you astray from that. Don't let them make you become oblivious of the fact that you are going to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For indeed, if that were to happen, they would only want to see you drop low. They would only want to see you drop low. This is why we say, have good company. Be in the company of those who remind you of Allah. They remind you, you have to die. People say, Stop telling me that I'm going to have to die. Okay, I'll deal with it when I get there. No, a gift of a believer is when you are reminded the hadith says, 
increase the remembrance of that which destroys all the desires of man. What is that? Death. So if you keep on talking about it, it is a point of concern. When I talk about it, that's when I'm going to be able to prepare for it. If we don't talk about it, we're going to be living life to the degree that we're going to forget that a day will come when it's not going to help us anymore. We're going to die. This is why always remember the gift of a believer is death. You and I have been promised paradise. We've been promised goodness. We've been promised reward. Tell me, how do you expect to receive that reward when you don't want to get to the prize giving? Subhanallah, where is the prize giving? You have to die first. Then Allah says Jannah. It's like once I asked the crowd, who wants Jannah? The whole crowd put up their hands. And I said, well, who wants to die? No hands were up. So I said, my brothers and sisters, in order to get to Jannah, you need to die. Allahu Akbar. The minimum is prepare for it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and grant us ease. A task was given to Musa alayhi salatu was salam that he felt was very, very difficult. When he was young, he had injured his tongue. He used to stutter. And as he grew older, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, go to the Pharaoh, go back to him, go tell him, go and remind him he is not the God. He needs to worship Allah alone. He needs to mend his ways. He needs to release Banu Israel. He has enslaved them, etc., etc. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says immediately, Musa alayhi salatu was salam knew this is very, very heavy. The best way that I can fulfill the instruction of Allah is by asking Allah himself to make it easy for me. When Allah has instructed us to fulfill our salah and various other commands, instructions, and he's asked us to abstain from prohibitions, the best way we can start off is by asking Allah to help me. Oh Allah, at the beginning of the day, oh Allah, help me to get up on time to read my Salatul Fajr. Oh Allah, help me through the day that I can Live this day in your obedience and not in your disobedience. What a beautiful way. Listen to what dua he makes. Verse number 25 of Surah Taha. قَالَ رَبِّ شْرَحْ لِي صَدْرِي وَيَسِّرْ لِي أَمْرِي وَحْلُ الْعُقْدَةً مِّنْ لِسَانِي يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِي This is only a part of the dua. He says, Oh Allah, my chest. You know, everyone wants to be very, very straightened, very open, very clear with their chest when they go and talk. It's not easy to stand and talk in front of people when you don't even know what you're going to say. You need to seek the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you need to have a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need to work hard in order to be able to know what you would like to say, etc. Here is Musa alayhi salatu was salam. He knows what he was told, but at the same time he's saying, Oh Allah, Oh Allah, make clear for me or expand for me my chest expand it for me make me a person who is not struggling with something what is that you know sometimes a little boy goes to the headmaster to talk and they they start shaking why because they are nervous nervous for what just because this is a headmaster musa alayhi salatu was salam knew that this was not applicable it's the message of allah i won't be nervous i know but i'm asking allah oh allah still protect me from it protect me from this type of nervousness where the chest becomes tight rather oh expand it for me make it such that i bravely can go up to him you know when someone says i opened my chest and i came to him what does that mean that doesn't mean he ripped his buttons open. It means he stood like a man and he said, Hey, listen, this is what it is. And that's what it is. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that bravery. So this is the dua. Rabbi shrahli sadri. Then he says, Wa yassirli amri. The task you have given me, make it easy for me. Wahlul uqdatam min lisani. Oh Allah, untie the knot from my tongue so that they can understand what I am saying. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. What a beautiful dua. And I want to end with something amazing, something so beautiful for us to learn from. That is, take a look at the Prophet Musa alayhi salatu was salam. He was the best of the time. At that time, he was the highest in the sense he was a Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah sent him to the worst. Not only the worst of the time, but one of the worst of all time. He was known as the Pharaoh. But when Allah sent him 
to such a terrible person who used to call himself God, who used to enslave people, oppress people, kill people, harm people, usurp the wealth of people, think he was a big deal, think he was the biggest deal, scoff and mock about Allah. When Musa alayhi salatu wasalam told him about Allah, he says, okay, I want a ladder. I want to go and see who is this Allah that you are referring to in the heavens. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. What arrogance, he was making a mockery. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still above that, on top of that, Allah says, go to the Pharaoh. And you know how to talk to him? Verse number 44 says, Go and speak to him with some soft speech. Speak to him very respectfully calm soft speech use some soft words with him because that might result in him remembering and in him fearing Allah so the best was sent to the worst and told speak politely speak soft words my brothers and sisters we can never be better than Musa alayhi salam those whom we are calling to or those whom we are calling towards Allah can never be worse than the Pharaoh so we have to speak in an even softer tone with even softer words remember that nobody on earth today can be equivalent to the pharaoh and nobody on earth today can be equivalent to musa alayhi salam so if allah told musa to speak to the pharaoh in such a soft and humble way what about anyone on earth today brothers and sisters the people we talk to are our brothers our sisters our parents our in-laws daughter or mom in law sorry to say that again but at the same time no matter who they are speak with respect soft words kind words with a smile with good expression and inshallah you will save yourself from a lot of trouble and turbulence in this world as well as the next may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina muhammad Welcome, oh Ramadan. You are honored, oh month of the Quran. It is Ramadan. This program is brought to you by Oasis.